Welcome to everyone here today. Um, as you can see, the, the title for our presentation today is all about the National Open University of Nigeria, also known as NAM, their OER strategy, successes, challenges, and lessons learned. This is actually the fifth in a series of Emerge Africa webinars, um, which falls under the umbrella of MOOCs in Africa, Massive Questions, Open Discussion, where we look into the current status of how African higher education institutions are using MOOCs. So our presenter today is Dr. Jane Frances Agbu, as Jakob mentioned earlier on. And Jane is an Associate Professor of Clinical Psychology and also the Dean in the Faculty of Health Sciences at the National Open University of Nigeria. She is also an Honorary ICDE Chair in Open Educational Resources and has been involved in NAM's OER strategy since 2014. She has also been very active in open education systems for the past 11 years and has contributed immensely in this sector. She is extremely passionate about opening up knowledge for the common good. So in this particular session, um, Jane will be discussing Noun's OER strategy, including sensitization, capacity building, and the design of Noun's first OER-based MOOCs. So Noun is one of the first open universities in the world with a fully-fledged OER and MOOC implementation route. So it is wonderful to have Jane with us here today. And thank you very much for setting aside time to speak to us about this very interesting topic. Um, and I would like to hand over to Jane now to continue with her presentation. So over to you, Jane. Thank you. Okay. And thank you, Catherine. Can you all hear me? Oh, perfect. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, and thank you, Catherine, for the kind introduction. And I uh, also want to thank you all for tuning in and uh, being interested in this uh, very important discussion. Like uh, Catherine mentioned, I'm Jane, Dr. Jane, from the National Open University of Nigeria, and uh, I'm going to dwell on the strategies in National Open University of Nigeria OER strategies, specifically the successes, the challenges, and the lessons learned. So I, I want to start with a little recap of my institution, what it's all about. The National Open University of Nigeria was established first in 1983, but it was uh, closed down in 1984 because of clear uh, perception about uh, open and distance education and the uh, poor insight in this, area, uh, in this area. So the perception was somehow a bit uh, poor then, but we are grateful that in 2002, the management, the government felt that the Nigeria is uh, ripe again for to embrace open and distance education. So it was re-established in 2002. So my institution is about uh, 14, 15 years old, fairly young, but we are striving in spite of the, the misconceptions and the uh, still a little bit of palpable, uh, poor insight about the beauty of open and distance education. So as the name implies, it is a single mode university and with the headquarters in uh, Abuja, Nigeria. And we have uh, 78 study centers. And as at August this month, we have about 400,000 400, plus students. And uh, most interestingly, we have more than 2,000 course materials that are available online. And if you click on the link uh, presented in the slide, 
you will be able to access our course materials. And uh, also take note that so most of them are not OER, they are not openly licensed yet because we are still trying to embrace the concept and uh, learn more about it. And for also, fortunately, we have a 32 OER course materials. If you click on the website below that, you'll be able to view what we have been able to achieve so far. Because uh, we realized that uh, opening up our content was uh, a bit challenging in terms of updating the materials, in terms of making the links active and clickable and all that. And also in 2016, we were able to run our first MOOC titled History and Philosophy of Science, which we could also get from the website below. Okay. So we are talking about open educational resources. I, 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 I assume most of us know what OER is, but just a recap. By definition, they are simply educational resources that include curriculum maps, course materials, textbooks, streaming videos, multimedia applications, podcasts, and any other materials that have been designed for use in teaching and learning that are openly available for use by educators and students without the accompanying need to pay royalties or license fees. So this definition is a very popular definition by Butcher 19, uh, 2011. Butcher is very, very active in this area and uh, is, uh, I respect him a lot. So how do we also get to understand what OER is all about? By laying insight on David Wiley's five hours of uh, openness, which which are to retain, reuse, revise, remix, and redistribute. So with OER, you should be able to, and OER material enables us to uh, uh, retain, reuse, revise, remix, and redistribute materials. So and don't, uh, also you take note that what we're talking about is the open license that helps us to do that. Also important to our understanding of open educational resources is the, 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 the concepts of ped, uh, pedagogy and uh, digital. And these concepts, uh, these two concepts, for example, pedagogy underpins the notion that using resources as an integral method of communication in curriculum in educational courses. Okay? It underpins the, the importance of resource-based learning, basically. And the, also, the digital part of it is the ease in which uh, digitized content, uh, content or materials are shared via the internet. And, the, and this has the uh, potential to fully unleash the power of resource-based learning. And what is this resource-based learning that we're talking about? You know, it's the, the resource-based learning is a kind of breaks down the traditional notion that a talking teacher is the most effective strategy for communicating the curriculum. So the focus here is placed on the design of on the design and development of high quality resources as a strategy for building and assuring the quality of educational provision. So resource-based learning helps us to, 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 to de-emphasize the notion that the talking teacher is the best, uh, the, is the owner of knowledge, like kind of the sage on the stage, okay? So OER gives us a lot of resources to build on and to learn from. So what are the benefits of open educational resources? We talk of the issue of access. Access in the sense that the young, the old, the rich, the poor have the capability and have the opportunity to access best materials, quality materials out there on the, on the net, digitized material. And don't forget that OER is not necessarily only digitized, but when it is digital, 
it is a lot more uh, freely avail available. So access the knowledge that OER opens for us for common good is for everybody, whether you have the money to buy the materials or not. So, and what this means is it, it helps us to have a sense of belongingness that yes, the young and the old, the rich and the poor have the same knowledge and they can access knowledge. In terms of cost, OER helps us to reduce cost because when the resources are freely available, it is very cost effective. And this brings us to the issue of equity. You can also link equity with access. Equity of what? Knowledge. Equity of what? Resources. Equity for what? Lifelong learning. Okay? So, and OER also helps us to enhance our pedagogy because when we build on retain and revise the materials, it can only get uh, better, okay? In addition, OER helps us to enhance healthy knowledge sharing, a healthy culture of knowledge sharing in the sense that academics are encouraged to be to be uh, sharers of knowledge, not holders of knowledge. You know what is happening out there in our universities? Most lecturers are, uh, not, I don't know, I don't, I'm not, not really scared of sharing knowledge, but because of the economic reasons, you know, why should I share my knowledge after spending so much time and energy building on that? So it makes us, you know, it gives us that confidence to share knowledge instead of hard knowledge. And when you share knowledge, it's for common good, okay? And knowledge shared is, is much, much better because if you don't share things apart from knowledge, you, you, I don't think, if, if, you, if you're a hoarder, I, I, it's, 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 it is more fulfilling to share than to hoard things. That is basically what I'm trying to explain. It also helps us to have a better engagement for learners, okay? And also materials, uh, it, it gives us the opportunity to repurpose uh, materials in different formats, whether in, in EPUB format, whether in open document text format, whether in uh, as a, a YouTube, in different formats, OER gives us that opportunity. And also, uh, most uh, uh, lastly, it gives uh, it gives opportunity for lifelong learning. Sometimes it gives uh, that opportunity where where certificate is not needed because knowledge is about lifelong learning. It's not necessarily about certificates all the time. And it also helps workers to improve on the particular areas of uh, specialization. So, so what are we trying to say? OER gives us opportunity to share knowledge for common good, for the good of all. Like I mentioned earlier, we have the issues of copyright and open licensing. And this is very important in our understanding of open educational resources. To many, this may appear very technical. It is still technical to me, okay? but you know, with time, you will get to really appreciate this uh, open licensing and copyright issue. So open educational resources is basically based on the premise that someone has copyright of a content. So traditionally, copyright holders can assign the right to anyone or license the work for use in a specific manner. So open licensing and licenses also provide that option to the copyright holder. So with open license legally, they are legally binding instrument that grants permission to access, reuse, and redistribute a work with few or no restrictions. And we have quite a lot of open, uh, 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 open licenses out there, but the most, uh, uh, the popular ones that we use is Creative Commons. And Creative Commons license has three different types of licenses, of which four are normally considered open licenses. And for more details, you can also look at the school publications of uh, understanding open educational resources to 
really have a firm grasp of the CC licenses that we're trying to explain. Right? Because for want of time, we may not be able to explain all that. So let us go to the OER in National Open University of Nigeria when we talk about the strategy. Yeah, I, re I, I wouldn't say that we had a, a logical strategy, really. You know, it came out, it, it was born out of passion and excitement about open educational resources. I, I had to interview my former vice chancellor and he, he made me realize that in 2008, the National Open University of Nigeria hosted a pre-conference uh, presentation of the African Council for Distance Education where uh, the, the, the issue of open educational resources was, uh, was presented and shared. Then in 2009, there was uh, an MOU between NOW and OER Africa and that was actually from my former vice chancellor because I, I had to interview him recently for me to have further insight in this uh, area. And also in, on the 8th of June, according to him, 2010, he had a presentation to the Senate on OER support for open and distance learning in now. Okay? But what are we trying to say here? We might, much later you understand the importance of management and leadership, okay? Because all these things happened and somehow it fizzled out, you know? The, oh, the, the vice chancellor had to, the, the tenure elapsed and, uh, the, you know, you have to have the, the, this issue of sustainability. There was silence in the university until 2013 when uh, a Commonwealth of Learning and UNESCO in collaboration with the Economic Council for West African States organized a workshop in Abuja introducing open educational resources for to universities in West Africa and uh, I was really opportuned to be part of the participants and uh, so when I, come, I came back to, after the workshop, I wrote a concept note and a proposal for the need to national, for National Open University of Nigeria to key into open educational resources because I realized that being an open and distance learning institution, we are actually, and we also have a lot of online course material, we are actually equipped to embrace open educational resources. Okay, so and uh, about a year later, after the proposal, my vice chancellor, before then, in 2013, uh, with my proposal with the vice chancellor, he made a declaration at the PCF 7, Pan Commonwealth Conference 7, uh, in Abuja, that now is ready to, to embrace open educational resources. And his reason was that our materials are online and they are OER already. And uh, of course, he, was, he really didn't have much insight in open educational resources. So I quickly told him that, yes, our materials are online, but they are not OER because they are not openly licensed. You know, because you really need to have insight in that. The fact that you have online material doesn't mean that they are OER they have to have the most important statement is the open licensing statement. And before you, 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 you stamp an, a, a license statement, you make sure that the materials are really have quality specifications and up to standard before you do that. So uh, uh, happily in 2014, an OER unit was established under the Vice Chancellor's office. So that is basically how we started and we had the mandate to uh, work on the uh, sensitization, do a sensitization drive in this area and, uh, and uh, uh, on everything that has to do with open educational resources. So part of the strategy and what I would say success story 
is collaboration. Collaboration is extremely important. In 2013, during the, the, oh, the uh, OER uh, com, uh, workshop for West African states, UNESCO was part of the activity, specifically Abel King. He was then the program officer, specialist in UNESCO, in OER. And he promised that any university that is bold enough to embrace open educational resources, he will come in and assist. So when uh, my university established the unit, I wrote to Abel Kane and fantastic. I was so shocked when he came in and with full support, he was able to assist because the fact that uh, I was the, the head of the unit then, but I knew nothing about open educational resources. So it's just the vision. You may have the vision, but the technicalities of that with support of friends and colleagues and experts in that area, you will pick up from there. So I was actually scared, but I had the vision. And UNESCO came in to, to really, really, really help out. And they also we had a, in in, in, in a collaboration with UNESCO, Abel Kane invited uh, Fred Mulder, is a, a UNESCO chair in OER and, the, and also invited the EADTU Europe for, to help us and uh, in addition he was able to invite uh, Fred, uh, Fred Devries, is also a specialist in instructional design and uh, open educational resources. These are the people that supported us and somehow I told you earlier, the strategy was not clear, but somehow with the support of friends and specialists in this area, the strategy became a bit clearer. And we went, what we did first was sensitization drive. In September 2014, just a month after the establishment of the unit, we had sensitization drive for policymakers. It is very important to, to bring the policy makers, the directors, the management, the policy, the deans and the heads of departments, if it, as the case may be, on board. So we had a two-day sensitization meeting with the policy makers, explaining what open educational resources is all about, why the, the importance of OER, and why my university should key in into the the, the, the drive of opening up knowledge for common good. And it was very well received, mainly also because of management. My vice chancellor then, Professor Vincent, was a visionary. So he was really excited about open educational resources. And it, he actually he made it work. So the policymakers embraced the concept. And they gave us uh, the, the, the blessing to go ahead to teach, to, to learn about OER and also to help the, uh, uh, my university to draft a policy in this area. In, in February 2015, we had another uh, sensitization and training workshop for senior staff of uh, now, which comprise both teaching and non-teaching staff. Okay. And before then, we had a survey trying to, to understand their level of understanding of open educational resources. And the, the result of the survey was that most of the faculty thought that our materials that are already online are OER. They thought that we have our materials online already, so why are we making noise and disturbing everybody about OER? We have keyed into OER already. So it took us a lot of patience and time to explain to them that no, we don't have OER, but we can uh, key into that because we are well positioned to do that. So the sensitization went very well. And then also it was followed up in July and then November 2015 with training for course writers and also other academic staff in OER. So this includes sensitizing them about open educational resources as well as 
train them on how to convert materials into open educational resources. So basically, we worked with the, the, the raw materials that the faculties have. And uh, we, in, 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 in my university, we usually update our materials every five years. So we worked with the ones that need revision. And in, what do we mean by revision? We make sure that the, the, the references are up to date, that the new, uh, additional um, uh, icons or links that will make the, the material uh, up, uh, updated are there. We make sure that the links are clickable. We also uh, design fresh and interesting icons that will make the material more appealing. Even we change the, the font, the font uh, from uh, Times New Romans to uh, G San Bold, because we, we, we noticed that it, it appeared better with that particular font. And uh, in addition, we converted the materials into EPUB for mobile devices, uh, PDF for portability, and the open document text for editability. Because OER, that, that ODT version is the version that actually helps you to use the five R's, the revise and all that, because you cannot actually revise from on the, on the PDF version and so on. So it's very important to have an editable version when you're releasing your materials out there for, for as OER. Also, uh, as part of uh, collaboration and training, we, we collaborated with the regional training, uh, what we call Retreader, re uh, regional training in uh, distance uh, learning. It is a, is a an organization based in, in now, so uh, we all collaborated with them in sensitization drive and for that training. And Retreda trains institutions in West Africa. Then finally, on the 10th of December 2015, we felt that since we have been working on this for about a year and four months, it is good to share our story with the federal government of Nigeria. So we did uh, what we call a presentation, sensitization, and preliminary studies with stakeholders and the, the ministries. And this held in, in Abuja on December 2015. And uh, about 140 participants were there present with, uh, from the ministries of education, from universities around, from dual mode universities and all that. And uh, the objective is for us, for them to hear our success story and uh, trigger more, more interest in open educational resources. And also part of our story is we, 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 you know, we are fond of documenting our steps. Uh, in, as a matter of fact, we have steps in converting material into OER. And also uh, where there's a small booklet that we have that talks about um, conversion to mobile OER. So in addition to that publication, we had one in Open Praxi on the, the best uh, of two open words at the National Open University of Nigeria. It basically talked about our story, what we have learned, our strategies, our successes, and what we wish to achieve in future. OK? So and uh, in addition, we we had we were able to draft an OER policy, but what I failed to mention earlier is that in the unit we have the 18 member committee, part of the program, the, the, the OER unit, and we meet we meet twice uh, once in two months to analyze where we are and what we need to do. Aside from the, the units that have in the unit also in the new unit we have an instructional designer and a web specialist in addition to me as a coordinator then so we were able to draft an OER policy and this policy was uh, approved by the Senate in June 2000 and, uh, 
16. And in addition, with the help of uh, uh, Abel Kane, and also, most importantly, with the help of uh, IIT Kampo Institute of uh, Technology, uh, Kampo, uh, where is it, you mean? Kuala Lumpur. Uh, we were able to, they, they actually gave us an, uh, a, a platform to run our program free of charge. And uh, that is why collaboration is very important. So with that platform, we were able to design our first MOOC known as uh, history and philosophy of science. You know, the turnout wasn't as we expected, that is always the issue, but we had about 420 participants and uh, more than 50% of them were able to persevere to the end. But it was a learning process for us and it was really an exciting uh, experience. Okay. So uh, what, the, the, what we have next is a, just a snapshot of now OER repository. Under there you have the schools, different faculties, School of Education, Science and Technology and all that. And uh, when you click, you will see the, uh, the materials that uh, they have. And uh, also you take note that we have more materials under Faculty of Education because uh, a university requested that uh, we open up some courses in early childhood education. So we worked more on that. Okay. Yes, and uh, another, the other slide is uh, our OER license page. It took us, this page of about three paragraphs took us more than six months to come up because this, what you are looking at is not as easy as you think. There are a lot of, uh, you know, deliberations, what kind of license do we use, what kind of statement. The statement has to be really clear and straightforward. So with the help of Abel Kane, even we had to also uh, 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 seek uh, opinion of other experts and uh, we were able to come up with uh, this page, which we also deliberated in the committee and also shared with the management because uh, it's a management decision. So this page basically guides you on how to use and reuse and attribute the content. So, so that is basically our statement and then also how to, how to cite the content. Then part of the lessons learned, you know, like I mentioned earlier, it is quite uh, interesting when you try to convert materials into OER. So when we tried to do that, we, re we realized that our materials that we were so excited about were kind of manually typed. What do I mean by manual typing? Some of the style, um, uh, you know, in my Microsoft Word, there are places where you see style 1, style 2, header 1, header 2. They were missing in our original materials. And, you know, when we, when we tried to convert them into uh, e-books, it was quite problematic because there's no way they could not really fit into the, the frame, the mobile devices. So we had to go back and what we call clean files. We had to clean up the files, make sure that they are in certain heading and heading one, heading two, because by the time you do that, it's also very easy for you to generate your table of content and all that. So it took it, it was really an, an eye opener for us. Quite interesting, really. So we cleaned up the files in addition to adding clickable links, adding uh, YouTube videos, OER uh, materials in them. So that from the materials you can click and move to the other to other uh, sections in the out there in the web. So uh, also the next one is the icon of um, the, the 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 three types of uh, versions of OER. We open them as open educa uh, open document test for then as ebooks, epub, and the uh, PDF for portability and uh, self-print. Okay. So uh, then the next uh, one is, is 
what we did. This is the clear picture of what we had to do in order to clean up the file, our documents. Quite complicated, quite interesting, but it was a learning process because we had the vision, but we really didn't know that it would be quite challenging for us to, to do this. So in addition to embracing of the educational resources, we were able to, to learn additional skills on how to clean up files. And uh, also this was transferred to, to the academic, the faculty. So you can see from my slide, you see the, the, the original version on the, on the left hand side and what it looks like after cleaning up on the right hand side. So I, I'm glad, I, I'm sure you agree with me that it appears much uh, reader friendly and uh, less clumsy. Okay. So, and, uh, and in addition, we realized that uh, most of our cover page, we needed something that speaks African to us because we need people to know that, yes, this is, you know, from the cover page, you should know where the material is coming from. So we had to, to, to invite a graphic designer. We took cameras, we bought cameras, we went to the street, explained what we were doing, and we were able to take some interesting, beautiful pictures. And we were able to de redesign our cover pages. So you can see the new cover page, and uh, as well as the content, content that looks much more appealing to the eyes. Okay, so it, it was really quite an interesting journey. Then the, the next one is the, 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 low, the uh, how do I put it, our MOOC platform, the History and Philosophy of Science. It was supported by UNESCO with funding from EU, COAL and the and Nigerian uh, government. And uh, in the EPUB, uh, in the MOOC, we had a podcast, we had badge, uh, badges, we have a uh, uh, reflections and self-study and the uh, presentations and uh, it's also important to know that our MOOC is an OER MOOC because MOOC is not necessarily OER but we made ours an OER MOOC. So this is just a, a snapshot, an example of uh, our MOOC Unit 1 History of Western Science. So in the, in, you, you'll be able to click on the uh, podcast and, uh, and uh, we had a lot of audio, audio presentations in the MOOC as well as few videos in the, at the preliminary, uh, 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 the preliminary uh, session of the MOOC. So we've been able to talk about the success. Yes, I think it's clear enough. The, challenge, the success in terms of collaboration, in terms of our experiences, our challenges, what we learned along the way, being able to embrace, being able to get an OER policy, being able to, co to convince the management to key in. And also our challenges, you know, we thought that is about the vision, but it's not only about vision. Vision is good, interest in OER is good, but it's sustainability is very important and one of the of also the challenge is management the management must have a buy-in because as an institution if the management is against open educational resources I don't think you will move uh, far okay so and uh, some of the challenges and uh, I would say lessons learned is the sustainability of the vision, like I keep hammering, management, management, policy makers, they have to buy in. And also you need to also convince your, your colleagues because naturally people are suspicious about open educational resources. They have this fear about sharing knowledge and you know, uh, psychologically what kind of fear are we talking about? Is it fear of being scrutinized? Is it fear? Because open educational resources helps you to be a confident scholar. If you are confident about what you have there and you are not afraid of, of 
kind of, of being scrutinized or having a, a, a encouraging input from you know colleagues out out there because by the time people review your work, it can only make it better. So when I ask my colleagues, you're afraid of what? Of scrutiny, of failure? Why don't you open up, relax, open up knowledge, and when people work on it, it will make it better, and you have, you'll be a more confident and less rigid scholar. So you were talking about the issue of poor perception about OER from the economic sound aspect of it. Even institutional, sometimes they have. How can we, we? We need to. We need to make money from this material. How can? Why should we open it up? Okay, but in, in OER, you can actually eat your cake and have it. You can open up content as well as make money from it. Okay, but that is not. That is what people really don't understand. And it's important to also note that you know the UNESCO. The first World Congress recommendation, part of the recommendation is for government to open up license, uh, open up materials that are that were funded with public funds, with uh, taxpayers' money. Okay, but people, most governments really don't realize that they are changing their citizens. You fund a material, you fund a textbook, and what happens? You allow. The, the consultants or the, 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 the writers go away with that. And you spend so much millions of dollars funding that. So I think government should insist that any material that is publicly funded should be released under, under an, open, an open license. That way, they, you know, they, are, they are sharing knowledge and you know, they are, the, the money that they invested is not wasted. So and uh, recently, I, I, I am coordinating a, a policy state uh, document for higher education in Nigeria, and uh, that is the strong point. And uh, we presented it to the National Universities Commission, and for the first time, we realize they realize that yes, the citizens are being changed. Government fund materials, and they don't they, they are ignorant of the need to open it open, uh, use an open license to open it up for, for a lot of other people to key in. So it's, it's really very important for the policy makers to have an insight into that. And also some of the challenges of OER is that there are few champions in this area. I don't know why, but people feel that you know everything free is not of you know of good quality, you know, but in OER, opening up layer content is, is, is for the benefit of all. So why should we think of the economic aspect of that, you know? Because actually, in one of my presentations some time ago, I, I tell us, in Africa, we share a lot of things. We, are, we live communal life. People ask you how your children are whether they've eaten for the day and all that. We share things. Our parents tell us folk uh, tales. So, but when it comes to educational um, uh, materials and all that, we hold them. It is in us to share. So why do we hold knowledge? Our forefathers, uh, our forefathers really didn't, did not hold knowledge from us. They passed it down the best way they could from uh, uh, true songs and uh, you know tales by moonlight and folklore and all that in the 21st century what is happening to us are we so fixated with make gains and gains and gains that we forget that the most important thing is to hand down the knowledge okay so open educational resources gives you that opportunity to 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 you know insist on you know opening up knowledge for common good because at the end of, at the end of the day it improves the dignity of everyone around okay so and also I've also, also talked about the loss of economic gain and the, then some of the other challenge we have is how to identify OER because sometimes when you go to the links the OER links you see just maybe course outline or just one uh, one module and all that and it's quite frustrating and some people really don't know the 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 site where they can 
or you know download and uh, be able to access uh, open educational resources and also how to to uh, kind of understand the open license the type of license that was specified you know that so that is just the last one understanding open licenses you know in creative common we have six licenses cc by sa cc by nd non-commercial and all that so people really need to know what those uh, icons and uh, statements mean so so in spite of the challenges i want to end with access to relevant learning resources is an important aspect of lifelong learning and the ability to provide that access at the necessary skill is proving a challenge so addressing this challenge is essential for ensuring inclusive and equitable quality education and lifelong learning opportunities for all and this is the vision and the prayer of sustainable development goal four. So development of open educational resource is a potential answer to these challenges. It provides government, institutions, organizations, and individuals with access to some of the best materials available globally. And this allows them to adapt the materials to fit the local context and reduce costs associated with materials and course development. Okay, so I think that is the end of my presentation and I, I thank you so much for your patience and uh, thank you for listening. So I'm going to mute my microphone and uh, we'll take it off from there. Thank you so much. Thank you very, very much, Jane. This has really been a wonderfully comprehensive and clear presentation. And thank you very much uh, for going through all of those different aspects. Now, there have been a couple of questions that have been raised in the text chat area that I'll repaste into the text chat so that you could address these. And going from the start of the presentation, there was a question raised by Jerome near the beginning. And I'll paste it into the text chat area now. Um, Jerome said, uh, how has Noun addressed the problem many academics have of being unwilling to share their resources as OER? So that was the first question raised by Jerome. Okay, Jane, would you like to answer that? Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, how has now been able to address the problem? Uh, many academics have uh, on unwillingness to share their resources as OER. Yeah. You know, we, we were now was actually very patient with that because you know OER is is quite new to us really and uh, like I noted earlier many academic staff thought they knew what open educational resources is all about but they really didn't know much from the survey we had so what we did was continuous sensitization what are OER what are the types of OER what are open licenses the gains and benefits of OER some of the challenges and all that so, and uh, we were also we also encourage the faculty to to carry out research in this area. So, but, but naturally that there are few hesitants. You know, it's it, it, like I mentioned earlier. OER is not it's it is a concept that people view with a little a bit of hesitant hesitant. And then I noted earlier that there are few champions in this area. But what we need is patience, really. We, we tackled the issue of perception about open educational resources. Economic challenges were raised. Economic uh, fears were raised. Um, um, uh, the issue of, uh, um, uh, how do I put it, uh, fear, you know, scrutiny. But majorly, how now was able to address that is we told them that 
it is not th that our materials are now has copyright to all our materials okay because the copyright the the materials are public funded materials and once the faculty or the external uh, writer is able to round uh, write and uh, submit the materials the copyright automatically goes to the national open university of nigeria so in, in a sense the faculty really had no choice but to kind of be subtle with their resistance because the materials actually belongs to the government and the inner uh, uh, that, that was, uh, it actually belongs to the national open university of nigeria so that was why it was a bit easier for us to to embrace that and uh, so it's not an, an issue of individual resistance and fear because we, because the materials didn't belong to them in the first place so i think that is basically how we were able to address that but it has to do with policy and management uh, decision and also in addition because before the materials are published they go through peer review and we make sure that they are of good at reasonably quality standard so I think that is basically I hope it's a, it's, it's a good response to your question thank you thank you very much Jane and then there was another question put forward um, which was uh, collated by Jerome because uh, Jerome is actually hosting a group of his colleagues together there um, and his question uh, that he put forward from one of his colleagues was relating to uh, UNESCO's involvement you mentioned earlier on. I'll paste his question into the text chat. Um, Jerome was saying that he saw the input of UNESCO and OER Africa as well and perhaps other partners as well and without this how can institutions adopt and produce OERs? And then he's followed on with how can other institutions enlist the assistance of some of these partners so in other words how did you partner with these people and um, how can other institutions enlist the well getting back to what you said about collaboration to actually get together to work on OERs so would you like to follow that up Jane Okay, yes, thank you so much. Uh, I think I would like to start with the second one. How can other institutions enlist the assistance of some of these partners? Yeah, the, my, my, Mount's uh, story is an interesting one because I, in my presentation, I noted that I, I attended a, a workshop in OER in 2013 uh, uh, funded sponsored by UNESCO and the Commonwealth of Learning and ECOWAS. So there I, I was able to meet uh, Neil Butcher, uh, uh, Abel Kane of UNESCO, uh, Alex Gakuru of Creative Common, you know, because we really didn't know much, we didn't know who they were or what OER was all about. So and uh, interestingly, I, I kept, I, I, you know, I, I kept the contact because keeping contact is very very important it was an informal thing I kept we kept chatting they were asking how my institution was and uh, if is there any issue or if they need if we need help we are there to they will be there to assist so when my institution made the decision because it was my duty to make sure that my institution uh, uh, indicates the zeal and interest to embrace open educational resources because that is why I said you need champions in that area. One person can start something and you wouldn't know where it, the ripple goes. So immediately my, my vice chancellor indicated interest that okay let us listen to what uh, Dr. Jane has been talking about disturbing everybody for the past one year. I reached out to Abel King. I thought he was joking but he told me, Jane, I'm going to help you. And that was exactly how the collaboration started. So from there, he was able to introduce me to the OER chairs from EAD to you to uh, OERU, Wayne Mackintosh. 
to it. So that was actually what happened. There was really no legal documentation. We never signed any MOU with UNESCO or COAL or OERU and all that. They just saw the vision and the passion and they felt, okay, let us help Jane to drive this. And that was that. So there was no formal thing. And uh, I was able to take it up from there. And uh, interestingly, the management was enthusiastic. So with funding, partly from now and also partly from UNESCO, we were able to, to sustain that collaboration, which is extremely important. Okay, So the collaboration can come in terms of funding, but importantly, it's uh, about human resource, about friendship. I've been able to help. Currently, I'm helping the National University Commission to embrace open educational resources. So it's about identifying that, that individual that, will can, that can push you to, so that you can, you know, your, that vision will be shared from one end to another. So I think that is basically that. I, I hope I, I'm able to respond appropriately. Thank you, Jane, for that um, feedback. And I think your question also comprehensively covered uh, Olifemi's question that he had uh, partway through the presentation where um, he was uh, wanting to know about Abel Kane, but you mentioned something about that now in your question. So I hope that covered your question you had there, Olifemi. And then um, Tony had a question as well. I'll put it into the text chat. Okay, so Ch Tony was asking, have you been able to make a clear business case that the OER model makes the institution more sustainable? A very interesting question. Would you like to tackle that, Jane? Okay, I think I will try to... Mm, okay, let's see. Have you been able to make a clear business case that OER model makes institution more sustainable? Really, I, I, I wouldn't say yes or no, because as I am here, even with all the passion I have, I'm still learning about open educational resources. It's just the enthusiasm. So making a clear business case, we have bits and pieces of that in my presentations and my you know persuasion to in for different uh, organizations like the, the the one i had with the national universities commission you know focusing on the issue of of what we call third fund in nigeria third fund is in charge of you know coordinating and uh, sponsoring most of the uh, funding in educational resources, you know, and they also funded my institutions. So I think, uh, you know, it's making that case helps, okay? And also, in, a, in a, apart from NUC, we I had a presentation with African Council for Distance Education, you know, basically identifying the benefits of open educational resources and also the urge to look beyond the economic resistance for that, you know, for us to embrace the, the goodness of OER, you know. So let me say it's an ongoing, it's still an ongoing debate and uh, much later it will be more concretized and uh, clearer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jane, for the following up those questions. And I think that more or less addresses most of the questions uh, that were raised during the course of your presentation. And also there's been a, a lot of lively debate in the text chat area, which I'm sure everybody is going to peruse again at the end of the presentation. And thank you very, very much, uh, Jane, once again for uh, going through this very, very comprehensive and informative presentation. And I'd also like to mention thank you to your assistants who are there with you, who helped with the technical challenges um, that we experienced right at the start and managed to very uh, competently iron those out. So thank you to 
um, to Jane's assistance, tech assistance there with her at the moment. And um, for everybody who has been here today, thank you very, very much for joining us. Um, I'd just like to take this opportunity to let everybody know that there is one more webinar coming up in this series, uh, which is going to be on Thursday, and that is going to be at 1 p.m., that's South African time. So remember that you need to check what your local time is, and the title of that is going to be the Massively Open On-Air Courses, Contextualizing MOOCs in Africa. And the presenter there is going to be Rebecca Bayek, and she's a PhD candidate at the Pennsylvania State University in the United States. So if you would like to join us for that, we would love to have you here again. Same place, same time, in two days' time. Here is a link which you can also share with your colleagues. Um, and for further discussion on today's topic, if you think of a question afterwards that you would like to follow up, um, please join us on our web page. Um, okay, you should be able to see the links on the screen at the moment. You can further the discussion on the Emerge Africa Facebook page. The link is there. Um, you are also welcome to review the recording of this webinar. As Jakob said at the beginning, we've had live streaming and we also have recording happening. And you'll be able to see that shortly on the YouTube channel. And please follow us on Twitter as well to keep updated of all our latest events and happenings and as well on our Emerge Africa website as well. So thank you very, very much for attending today. This has been a wonderful presentation, extremely informative. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jane Francis Agbu. And we hope to see everybody here again on Thursday. Thank you very much. Over to you, Jakob.